China finds a loophole to sell weapons to Russia. The CEO of TikTok lies to Congress, and U.S. intelligence may finally reveal where COVID came from. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Incogni. You probably know the companies are collecting your personal data, but you may not realize just how many. Dozens, maybe hundreds, most of which you've never heard of, and you have no idea what they're doing with it. Incogni helps stop them. I'll explain more at the end. Xi Jinping met with Vladimir Putin this week. It's the 40th time they've met in the past decade which makes me sad because it's more often than I visited my own parents. Xi Jinping's visit to Moscow gave Russia a major boost, but at least there was no public promise of China giving Russia weapons. Yeah, no public promise. But it wouldn't be surprising to find that Russia is getting weapons from China. After all, they've cooked together, they've given each other friendship necklaces, they've tamed horses that many said were unbreakable. What a team! And now they're hailing a new era of ties in a united front against the West. It's beautiful. Or it would be if it didn't lead to the killing of Ukrainian civilians. That reminds me, I should go visit my parents. But after two days of hanging out together in Moscow, Xi Jinping and Putin had to say goodbye. And in a cryptic departing gesture, Xi told Putin that change is a coming. Change is not seen for a hundred years. Something we haven't seen in a hundred years? Are they gonna bring flappers back in fashion? A hundred years ago, in 1923, the Bolshevik Revolution concluded in Russia, so maybe it's communism that's coming back in fashion. That makes me nervous. Not the hundred years thing. I mean the part where Putin wishes she a safe trip. I'd be terrified if Putin wished me a safe trip. And in that same vein, I'd wish Putin a safe trip if he ever goes to Europe because the International Criminal Court has issued an arrest warrant for Putin over Russia's alleged war crimes in Ukraine. Those crimes involve stealing Ukrainian children and placing them in camps across Russia. This ruling effectively means Putin can never again travel to most countries without the risk of being arrested. I'm sure he can still travel to China, though, because while kidnapping children and putting them in camps is a war crime in most places, for the Chinese Communist Party, it's just a hobby. At least the U.S. is finally recognizing that China is not an impartial actor in the Russia-Ukraine war. Here's White House National Security Spokesman John Kirby. I don't think you can reasonably look uh, at, at China as impartial in any way. Um, they haven't condemned this, uh, in, uh, this invasion. Um, they haven't stopped buying Russian oil and Russian energy. Um, President Xi saw fit to fly all the way to Moscow hasn't talked once to President Zelensky, hasn't visited Ukraine. Meanwhile, Zelensky is like, hey, she, I haven't met you and this is crazy, but here's my number, so call me, maybe. But it's worse than China just not being impartial. There's evidence that China is already providing guns to Russia. Specifically, Chinese companies providing guns to Russian companies. I did an episode about that earlier this week on my other channel, America Uncovered. The link is below. But somehow, that doesn't cross a red line for the U.S. We haven't seen any confirmation or indication that the Chinese have provided lethal weapons, lethal capabilities to the Russian Ministry of Defense uh, throughout this conflict. Yeah, it's only a problem if China gives weapons directly to the Russian Ministry of Defense. So now China knows what to do. Use private companies, because there's no way the authoritarian governments in China and Russia would control companies in their countries. What do you think they are, authoritarians? 
Even Stevie Wonder could see this loophole. And after the break, the CEO of TikTok lies to Congress. Welcome back. The CEO of TikTok told lawmakers this week that its parent company, ByteDance, is not an agent of China. ByteDance is not owned or controlled by the Chinese government. ByteDance is not controlled by China. This ByteDance. It's not just that photo of ByteDance employees with the Chinese communist flag that gives it away. Three Chinese laws passed starting in 2017 compel Chinese businesses and citizens to support and facilitate China's government access to data, any data they want. There is no possible way that TikTok, being owned by a Chinese company, could be exempt from this requirement. Even if there's a signed agreement to not access Americans' user data, the Chinese Communist Party will not honor it. Stevie Wonder is like, guys, seriously, how are you more blind to this stuff than I am? You can tell the CCP won't honor it since TikTok user data has already been repeatedly accessed from China. Republican Representative Michael McCall has called TikTok a spy balloon in your phone. And fellow Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher called TikTok digital fentanyl. Okay, I know they're trying to make it sound scary, but spy balloons carrying digital fentanyl sounds like an amazing phone game. TikTok's CEO is now pitching something called Project Texas, which would supposedly keep user data in the U.S. He's hoping to prevent TikTok from being outright banned in the U.S. like it was in India. But given everything we already know about the Chinese Communist Party, it's a lie. Project Texas will not protect Americans' data. This man is lying, or he's stupid. The Biden administration has been repeatedly warned about the national security problems with TikTok, but they're unlikely to ban it, at least not before November 2024, because the majority of TikTok's 150 million users in the U.S. are young and vote Democrat. So any decision to remove the app would be politically fraught for Mr. Biden. Clearly, it's better to keep a national security threat than to lose in the next election. This is like if a politician stopped people from banning the Tide Pod Challenge because kids love it so much. That'd be ridiculous, since those kids aren't old enough to vote and not alive enough to vote. In totally unrelated news, Google has pulled the Chinese Pinduoduo app off Play Store over security concerns specifically concerns over spying. I'm starting to think the P in CCP stands for predictable. In the last couple of weeks, multiple Chinese security researchers have accused Pinduoduo of making apps that contain malware designed to monitor users. Pinduoduo is an e-commerce app owned by the Shanghai-based company PDD Holdings. PDD Holdings also owns the e-commerce site Timu, the one that advertises how you can shop like a billionaire. Meanwhile, the Chinese Communist Party can shop like an authoritarian regime with access to user data from any Chinese company. That slogan might not be as catchy, but it's more accurate. And after the break, U.S. intelligence will declassify what it knows about COVID. Welcome back. Hey, remember Han Dong? He's the Canadian Liberal Party MP who Canadian intelligence warned was an active part of a Chinese election interference network. Specifically, they warned Justin Trudeau's aides, who put their fingers in their ears and went, la la la, I can't hear you. He was also the same guy that Chinese international students were allegedly coerced to vote for back in 2019. They were told by the Chinese consulate to vote for Dong if they wanted to keep their visas. I covered all this in a previous episode on the CCP's election interference in Canada. Now, Canadian intelligence sources are saying that Han Dong secretly advised a diplomat from the Chinese consulate to delay freeing the two Michaels. The Michaels are two Canadian citizens who were arrested and held by the CCP for years in retaliation for Canada arresting Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou. Why did Han Dong tell China's consul general not to release the two Michaels? Because it would benefit the conservatives. Dong denies having this conversation. He says he did talk to the Consul General, but claims he called for the immediate release of the Michaels. And then he stepped down from the Liberal Party, while still denying that he did anything wrong. 
To be clear, he's still a member of parliament, but now he's just independent. Of the Liberal Party, at least, if not the Chinese consulate. President Biden has signed a bill to release U.S. intelligence on the likely origins of COVID. Those likely origins include lab, 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 wet market pangolin, and lab. The law to declassify this information was passed unanimously by Congress. It gives the Director of National Intelligence 90 days to reveal all the information about potential links between the Wuhan Institute of Virology and COVID. But U.S. intelligence agencies will redact their data to protect sources and methods before sharing it with Congress. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are some additional redactions before it's released. You know, to avoid revealing things that could make China angry. So we could just end up with redacted, 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 wet market pangolin, and redacted. Speaking of being redacted, a Winnie the Pooh horror film has been pulled in Hong Kong, even though the government says it's approved for screenings. What happened is the copyright for the original Winnie the Pooh, not the Disney version, expired last year. So someone decided to make a Winnie the Pooh horror film because this is 2023 and we're already living in the weirdest timeline, so why not? What next? The Teletubbies cosmic horror? Just kidding, it's already a cosmic horror. Look upon me in despair. Now, as you know, Comparisons of Xi Jinping to Winnie the Pooh are illegal in China, because this man is a very sensitive little bear. But this film is not political, it's just a super low budget British horror film. It's about how when Christopher Robin returns to the Hundred Acre Woods as an adult, the animals have gone feral, and Winnie the Pooh is out for blood. But that's not the point. What happened is Hong Kong's government actually approved screening the film. It has no explicit references whatsoever to Xi Jinping, other than Winnie the Pooh being a cold-blooded murderer, but that's more of an analogy than a reference. Then, shortly before it hit theaters, the film's distributor wrote in a social media post that they were canceling their own film's release in Hong Kong and Macau with no explanation saying only that we are sorry for the disappointment and inconvenience. This seems to be following a pattern. Hong Kong's national security law is downright frightening, with huge fines and long prison sentences. So people are terrified of crossing some unknown line. For example, over the past two weeks, two mass gatherings by a women's group and a Taoist group were canceled at the last minute by organizers despite receiving police approval. This way, the government gets to say, hey, we're not censoring anything. And people just censor themselves out of fear. So. I guess no need to show Hong Kongers scary movies. They can just watch their government. Not to mention monsters from other governments. And this episode is sponsored by Incogni. Whenever you do anything online or use apps on your phone, there's a huge number of companies that collect your personal data. When I signed up for Incogni a year ago, I discovered there were dozens of data brokers that potentially had my private information without my permission. Some types of data theft you can easily stop, like by not using Timu to shop or using TikTok to whatever. But other types of data theft are harder. A lot of private companies are accessing your data because you accidentally gave permission through a third party site. But there's a way to stop them. That's what Incogni does for you. It writes to these companies using specific legal language, forcing them to delete your private information. Incogni has already gotten my details removed from 102 of these sketchy data brokers, with a lot more in progress. And I didn't have to do anything after signing up. Incogni just handles it. So I recommend you get Incogni for yourself. Click the link below or go to incogni.com slash uncensored. For a limited time, the first 100 people to use the code uncensored will get 60% off. Get your personal data off the market with Incogni. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.